Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Ogre. Now Ogre is somewhere in between a game framework and a rendering engine. Uh, it is cross-platform, fully open source and it's been around for a very long time. Started back in 2001. There's been a lot of recent news about Ogre which is why we're covering it today. By the way, this video has been brought to you by Camtasia. Literally, I'm actually making this video in Camtasia and I will show you how and why later on in this video. Alright, so what you see in front of you right now though, this is one of the biggest reasons why you would consider using the Ogre framework, and that is footage of Torchlight 2. Now, this is a, a very battle-tested framework in that, again, uh, Torchlight 1, Torchlight 2, and their new game Hob were all created it. The game uh, Rogue Galaxy for desktops was also created using Ogre. Uh, another of A number of other titles have been created using it as well, and interestingly enough, Roblox. Yes, until about 2014, 2015, uh, Roblox actually used Ogre as their rendering layer. Now they have, uh, you know, more money than God and they basically just created their own uh, framework in-house. But this is the technology that um, Roblox basically grew up around. So lots to go on with Ogre. If you want to go ahead and check it out, available at ogre3.org. Uh, what you see here, quick feature list of Ogre itself. I'm not going to go into a ton of details here, but basically this is a code-based kind of game engine. If you want to build your own tooling and game technologies on top of it, it provides more than just a rendering layer, but a little bit less than what you would expect from a full-blown uh, game engine. And definitely, there's no tooling in place, so you'd have to use something like Max or Maya or create your own editor. There are some community-created like scene graph placement type tools out there, but what you're going to see here, uh, their, their top-level features is it's object-oriented, extensible, uh, common requirements like state management, spatial culling, dealing with transparency are all done for you automatically, clean, uncluttered design, and full documentation of all engine classes, and it has proven stable engine that has been used in several commercial projects. And this thing has had rendering support going back to the, the dawn of time. So you got things like Direct3D 9, or OpenGL 1, as well as ES2, ES3, OpenGL 3+, Plus, Vulkan, Metal, and so on. You also have WebGL support there. Uh, it's got Windows, Linux, macOS, Android, and iOS support. Uh, builds on various compilers such as Visual um, C++, GCC++, uh, 5 or later, or Clang. And there's no external dependencies from or for core features. So basically, out of the box, it just works. Now, one of the big areas where it's definitely changed is on the way that the uh, rendering and shaders and materials work. That is the big difference between Ogre Next and Ogre itself. We'll go to a quick summary of that in just a second. You see there's other features and functionality in here. Uh, support for a variety of different mesh types, including uh, use of the ass imp uh, importer to bring in commonly imported file formats. You do have animation support, a number of scene management features as well there. So you've got scene graph is handled for you using a hierarchical scene graph. And the scene graph is pretty much like the data structure for all the, the stuff that basically generates your game world. Plus, you've got a special effects system, including com um, compositor, editor, particle systems, etc. Actually, let's just do a quick demo. This, for example, is what you get if you download the um, uh, binary version of the SDK. A number of compiled samples for you. We'll go ahead and look at the um, post-processing example. You can pick your rendering engine. Again, at, this is Ogre Next. What you're seeing is you've got uh, Direct3D OpenGL as well as Vulkan. I'll go ahead with Vulkan and quick check this guy out. So this is... Oop. Okay, I don't know what's going on with my Zoom. I will stop doing whatever I was just doing. Okay, so what you see here, uh, Bloom, Radial Blur, Glass, Dithering, Old TV, Tiling, Old Movie, Motion Blur with Bloom. Let's go to the second scene. We can sharpen our edges. We can actually render as ASCII if we really want to do so. Uh, lapless, Half Toning, Black and White, Night Vision, Posterizing, Embossing, and finally, inversion. So that gives you an idea, kind of some of the, the compositing effects that are built into uh, this guy out of the box. So that is some of the samples you get if you go ahead and download Ogre uh, pre-compiled binaries already built for you. Uh, so that was the Ogre's base features and functionality there. Uh, there is a split now, and this is where it gets a little confusing. Ogre, again, started life back in 2001, and parts of it are definitely going to get a little bit long in the tooth, especially because of the way that we program graphics, like literally the way that GPUs work. We moved from a fixed function to a programmable pipeline. Um, so a lot of the things you'll see about Ogre Next is all about uh, that brand new, a modern physically-based rendering pipeline out of the box. Now, the catch is between these two, you're also giving up uh, some compatibility. And one of 
those areas uh, is the um, underlying APIs that are supported, but you also get losing some platforms here as well. So you can see over here, uh, Ogre, you've got all these platforms here, you're losing a couple. You're losing HTML5, uh, you're losing UWP, which nobody uses, and you're gonna need to have a more modern version of um, iOS and Android. iOS needs to be five or later, Android needs to be seven or later, and we're talking like five or six years old at this point in time. So that shouldn't be a big deal to anyone just starting a game now. You also notice some of the rendering technology is gone, Direct3D 9, OpenGL ES, OpenGL 1. So if you have some absolutely ancient hardware, it isn't gonna be supported. But where it really kind of gets, you're gonna notice over here, all these components and plugins haven't necessarily been ported yet. So you got definitely more, more of an ecosystem around the original Ogre than you do around the Ogre Next branch. And then on top of that, no language bindings. So you use Ogre with C Sharp, Java, and Python, whereas for Ogre Next, C++ only, at least at this point in time. Uh, and then we move on to some of the functionality between the material system, lighting and documentation change. So it was a fixed function pipeline previously, and now it's it's moved on to a new approach to doing things. And you're getting uh, a lot of functionality that, you know, you, Ogre, the original Ogre is gonna be missing things that you, you kind of consider modern and current. Things like global illumination, screen space reflection, ambient occlusion, and so on. But the big thing that you're losing again, a lot of these things haven't been ported over. And also, just be aware of this, Ogre is well documented, has a very strong history of support. Ogre Next is more of that bleeding edge thing. So definitely know uh, you're giving some stuff up to have that more modern rendering functionality you get with Ogre Next over Ogre. Um, in terms of Ogre itself, uh, they just released, well, just recently, so uh, about two weeks ago, they released Ogre Next 3. So Ogre is up to 3.0 version-wise. This version was about um, kind of re-architecting things. They actually switched to, get this one, C++ 11. <laughs> So things don't move exceedingly fast from a techno technological side of things uh, when it comes to Ogre itself, uh, but they've switched over to um, C++ 11, so about easier maintenance and porting to newer versions. They got rid of a ton of the warnings and errors that might've existed. Um, and then there's also some PBR, PBS changes to match what other engines are doing with compatibility functions to restore the old look. But they also have Ogre Next 4, which is also in development. So again, you have the Ogre Next branch, which is the um, more current cutting edge version of Ogre. Ogre continues to get updates. So there was Ogre 14-ish or something like that was released just a couple of months back. And then you've also got Ogre Next 4, which you can think of as the development branch of the development branch, which gets a little confusing at this point in time. Uh, and this has actually been in development for um, a year now. So once 3.0 stabilized, 4 is out there. So this is not a framework that moves at a lightning pace, but it is battle-tested and mature by the time it gets there. And then what they're looking at in Ogre Next is multi-threaded shader compilation and PSO generation. So it's greatly speeding up shader compilation, app loading, and reducing stutter. It's available for Vulcan, Vulcan and metal, metal rendering. So I think we're going to be moving away from the Direct 3D 11 side of things with features going forward. Uh, Particle Effects 2 plugin. So the original Particle Effects will uh, not be deprecated though. So they serve different means, have different functionality. So focus on performance, parallel CPU simulation, and vertex shader based geometry generation, and alpha hashing, alpha hashing with A2C, alpha to coverage. Um, so yeah, that's what's all about uh, in development with Ogre Next 4, the just released version of Ogre Next 4. Three, I know it all gets quite confusing. Uh, and if you're interested, again, entirely open source projects, they're all under the same parent, which is uh, the Ogre Cave on GitHub. So you can see there's a repository for Ogre, which is under the MIT license. And you can see here, the original Ogre still getting very uh, validly updated. So 14.3.1 was released just last week. People are doing commits near constantly to the original Ogre. But if you wanna use like a more modern rendering approach, we do have Ogre Next, which again is getting pretty constant updates. This is where the 3.0 release was just occurred like two weeks ago. Um, so you get an idea how long this project has been around. This is a 12 year old project for the next version. And then we have Ogre Next 4, which I, th oh, looks like it's its own branch, uh, also currently in development. So uh, the, the code side of things does get a little bit confusing when it comes to Ogre. Uh, and then if you're curious what Ogre itself ultimately looks like, this is uh, a post-processing example. You can see an idea of the source code of, uh, you know, how things look. So again, object-oriented in its approach. 
uh, he's inheriting from graphic system. Uh, and then, yeah, that's this is a, a, an example of Ogre Next code, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll go over here and see the other part of this example. Um, so yeah, C++ only. By the way, Ogre Next is 100% C++ only. Uh, and one of those things here is you're not going to want to use Ogre Next unless you're comfortable with the idea of you know going through source code to figure things out because the the stable documentation the published books and all that are for the original ogre now they're based off each other so you should be pretty comfortable in using one if you came from the other all right so that is ladies and gentlemen ogre ogre next ogre next three ogre next four i know it's all quite confusing the thing you just want to keep in mind is this thing is a very battle tested option so if you're wanting to work a little bit more at the source code level could be an interesting one to look at so this video has been brought to you by Camtasia, uh, both as a sponsor and as you can see, actually literally being created right now in Camtasia. This is a tool I've used since I founded this channel and I've never had any regrets. It just makes the stuff that I need to do super, super easy. And it also incredibly fast from the workflow. I don't really need to explain it that much because you can literally see it happening as I speak. If you're interested in going ahead to check out Camtasia, they have a fully functioning trial that is just watermarked. So you can get an idea of everything it does. If you want to buy it, use the code game from scratch at checkout to save 15% off. So thank you for sponsoring this Camtasia. And yeah, let me know guys, what do you think of Ogre, of Ogre Next, of all that? If you're going to start out using Ogre today, which version would you be using? The OG Ogre with the more support around the community or the new one with the more modern rendering? All right, that's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.